Have you ever wondered what it's like to be an axolotl in Minecraft? Well, don't wonder no more, because in this video, I am going to be attempting to survive 100 days of Minecraft Hardcore as an axolotl. Do I have what it takes to survive these 100 days without dying? Let's find out. This is 100 days of Hardcore as a Minecraft axolotl. Day 1. I spawned in a huge body of water, aka the ocean, and after discovering some land, I spent pretty much the day gathering the essential stuff for every normal world. As an exolotl, I only have 7 hearts, I swim fast in the water, and I can walk fairly the same speed as a normal player on land. I am one block tall, and I'm almost certain I am an amphibious. Day 2. I started the day with treasure hunting, got my first diamond, and found a place in the ocean to set up camp and found this very mysterious chicken in the middle of the ocean. I spent day 3 just hanging out, got in a couple of fights while doing some caving, and made a one block mine because I'm a small boy. Mining for 2 days on days 4 and 5 was extravagant. I found a deep slate that was unbreakable. I was also able to find some diamonds, but my pickaxe broke after mining the first one. After mining the diamonds, I made a diamond pickaxe and tried mining some obsidian, and because I'm so tiny, my pickup reach is really small, and I lost many obsidians to the lava. I made a portal and went through, just for the advancement. Day 6. In order to get some food, I went to a nearby island and chopped down all of its logs. I spent all day lumberjacking, and I only managed to get 7 stacks of dark oak log, because I only had stone tools. Day 7 to 10. I mined for 4 days straight, so I could get diamond tool and armor as soon as possible. In the end, I found 16 diamonds and a lot of other goodies, crafted my set of diamond tools and 2 pieces of diamond armor. Day 11. I started the day by clearing most of the kelp around my house because, well, it's ugly and can cause lag. I wanted to test my rowing abilities, but I found out as an axolotl, I carry boats everywhere instead of sitting in them. So I carried the boat to a nearby island, and on day 12, I gathered some food and set up some farms on the island, and I spent the night in the dark forest gathering bones for bone meal. Oh boy, was this a bad idea. Day 13. I lured two cows back to the island and went for an adventure and I found a shipwreck completely buried in dirt. Day 14. I chopped down some trees and found a ravine with some lapis. I wanted to test this new trick where you go 4 blocks north from the lapis and dig straight down to find diamonds, and it works! Later on I found a lonely chicken in the ocean and put it in a boat. This guy is going to be famous one day. On day 15, I grabbed all my gold, went to the nether and bartered with some piglins. While I was waiting for the pig to do his trades, I looked at three endermen at once because I was safe and could easily kill them. Or at least I thought I was safe. Day 16 and 17. I made a mob farm because I wanted to get my items enchanted as soon as possible, however, I didn't have any carpets, so for now spiders will spawn in there as well and they clog the system once in a while, but it works for now. Day 18. I was trying to make a fancy water elevator for the mob farm, but soon I ran out of stone, so I spent the day in my mine in order to collect some stone. At this point, I found a lapis patch which only meant one thing, diamonds. Aside from those diamonds, I found 5 different diamond veins, which was really awesome, and I got 41 diamonds in total. Day 19 to 21. I went back to making the fancy water elevator, and not long after, I ran out of stone again, and it was taking much longer than I thought, so I gave up and made the ugliest looking water elevator that has ever existed. 
I spent some time at the mob farm and enchanted my helmet, boots and got silk touch on my pickaxe. Day 22 to 24. I wanted to start building my base so I spent 3 days working on my base down at the bottom of the ocean and by the end of day 24 I was able to get some of it done until I ran out of deep slate. So I had a 3 day mining session for deep slate and other goodies from day 25 to 27. This time I had fortune 3 on my pickaxe and I was mining on y equals 5. My silk touch pickaxe broke while mining so I made a new one and did some enchanting but couldn't get silk touch. Nonetheless I got so much stuff from this mining session. Day 28. I wanted to spend some time at the mob farm to do some more enchanting and when I got to the island I saw a zombie villager and I was able to trap him in a dirt box just before the sunrise. At the end of the day I enchanted all my armor and axe. Day 29 and Day 30 I went on an adventure in order to find some cacti because I want to use cyan glass for my base and the only way to get cyan dye is to smelt cactus. I managed to find a village near the ocean and thought I could get a villager back home using a boat but turns out I suffocate if I get in a boat on land. So on Day 31 to 33 I wanted to get my base to a state where it's actually usable, so I spent another 3 days building and even though it's still not finished yet, I now have proper storage and entrances in the base. Day 34. I had gotten some wool from my adventure so I started the day by putting carpets in the mob farm so spiders won't spawn anymore. Day 35 and 36. I wanted to cure my zombie villager and get mending for my armor and tools but I didn't have any blaze rod to craft a brewing stand for the potions so on a two day journey in the nether I found a fortress, got some blaze rods and went back home. Day 37 I didn't have any spider eyes to make a weakness potion so I went into the caves with hopes of finding a spider but I ended up caving until the night of day 38 on which I went back to the surface and the first spider I killed dropped an eye. I then brewed the potion, splashed my villager and gave him a golden apple on day 39. I wanted to get my hands on a moss block and currently they are very rare since they can only generate in shipwrecks so I set off to an adventure and got some moss. My villager had been cured and there was only one thing left to do. Get the mending trade. Day 40 and 41. I put mending on my pickaxes and two armor pieces. So naturally I took two days off in order to repair them. Day 42. Axolotl. Axolotl in a bucket! Day 43 I made a whole bunch of sand so I could make TNT and get netherite. However, I had way less gunpowder than I expected. But on the bright side, I'll never have to go sand mining again. I headed to the nether and was able to find 11 cinnamon rolls, which I then smelted into chocolate. Day 44 Dirt, 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 grass, dirt, dirt. Uh, now you may be wondering why, but it all makes sense in a second. Day 45. I wanted to have some floating islands around my base. The first one being a plains biome one for my villagers. So I got building and really early in the building process I ran out of dirt. Day 46. I bought some more mending tools and put them on the rest of my tools so I spent a day at the mob farm. I spent all day 47 gathering dirt and got over a double chest full of dirt blocks. So on day 48 I went back to constructing this island and managed to finish it on day 53. The house itself looks a bit bland but I'm really happy with the shape of the island and waterfall. Day 54. It was time to move my villager. 
but I couldn't get in a boat on land, so I tried to lure him with feed seeds. But you guys already know that villagers are very stubborn, and this made it way worse, but I think I figured out the solution. Getting him up to the island, however, was another challenge on its own. And on day 55, and after a couple of tries, we finally did it. Day 56. I started building the second island for my nether portal and this one was going to be a smaller island so I was able to finish it on the same day. Day 57. I wanted to raid the ocean monument near my base so I grabbed some milk and dived into the ocean with my ex little friend. The first two Elder Guardians were easy to kill but the third one had so many guards to the point where it got really dangerous and when I summoned my buddy Axolotl it just decided to swim away. But after all, we got rid of all the Elder Guardians and I looted the gold blocks inside the monument. Day 58 to 60. I hadn't gone mining for some time and I missed that aspect of the game, so I did a 3 day mining session. It wasn't as successful as the previous ones, but we still got a lot of materials and diamonds. Day 61 to 63. I wanted to decorate my builds and have the sea floor lit. So I went on an adventure to find some corals, flowers, and sea pickles. Throughout my adventure, I saw some weird stuff. But the most interesting one was this ginormous cave opening, which looked amazing, and it was like a cave from 1.18. Day 64. We have now reached a stack of days. So I started day 64 by placing pickles all around my base. But I didn't understand why it couldn't, why I couldn't bone mill them until I found out that they only grow if there's a coral block underneath them. I never knew that before. Anyways, I did some decorating at the bottom of the ocean as well as on my villager's island and in my opinion, the bamboo looks really nice and really adds to the build. Day 66. I started the day by placing tripwire over the bamboo so they don't overgrow. I then went to the ocean monument in order to collect some sea lanterns so I can complete my house for this 100 days. Day 67 to 71. After 4 days of construction, my base is finally finished. I swapped out the dark oak at the top with sea lanterns and quartz which look way better in my opinion and it ties the whole place together and it's a great night light. But man draining this area was a lot of work. Day 72. I felt ready to go to the end so I made some eyes of ender and threw them. Well it wasn't doing much at first but a whole bunch of them flew away at once and I already lost an eye. What a great start. After climbing over mountains, carrying a boat on my head in the swamp and killing endermen for pearls, I found a stronghold down in a ravine. The portal room was exposed so thankfully I didn't have to go through all of the stronghold rooms. But I was two eyes short, so I made a portal and went to the nether. Day 73. I spawned next to a bastion, so naturally I went to loot it. But I had to be super careful since it's one of these bastions where the good loot is in the center and all of the pigs are surrounding me. I mined all the gold blocks, fell into the lava ones, and looted the chest which had two ancient debris in it. And then I skedaddled out of here because I didn't want to lose my ward right before the end fight. I killed every enderman I saw on my way of finding roaming piglins to barter with. I got the two eyes I needed and went back to the stronghold. But guess what? I counted wrong and I actually need three. After a long day of bordering with the only piggling I could find, I finally got the last ender pearl on day 74, and it was time to enter the end portal. I spawned under the obsidian platform and I was so lucky that there were blocks under it, or else we could have never made it to day 100. Or so I thought. I actually got teleported on top of the platform a few seconds later. Hello there again, we meet again.
we did it. The end is free now and we own the Ender Dragon Egg. I went through the gateway portal and we spawned on a little island, which is not ideal. However, I could see an entity literally next to me. But then again, it didn't have an end ship, so no light drop, at least not yet. Day 75 to 77. After bridging across the void for so long, my hands were starting to hurt and we found the world's smallest end city ever, containing only three shulkers and nothing else. But fortunately, not far from this end city, I could see two other end cities and both of them had end ships as well. After reaching the island, I went straight for the dragon head and the elytra, and I took all their amazing loot. I found a looting 3 sword in one of the chests which was really amazing because I didn't have one yet and it helped a ton with getting shulker shells. The other end city was a larger one and it had lots of amazing loot but for some reason the dragon head hadn't generated. Anyway, I didn't want to spend too much time here so I flew back to the main island and went back to the overworld. Day 78 I merged my sword with the looting sword I got from the end, combined my shovel with a newly enchanted shovel, and upgraded my sword to netherite. For my next project, I wanted to bring some life to my ocean and have giant axolotls underwater, so in preparation I started collecting terracotta, crafting concrete powder, and all the other small bits and pieces on day 79. This project took until day 81, but it was really fun and this is one of my favorite builds so far. They look so adorable. However, for some reason, squids don't tend to spawn near my base, so I used coal blocks instead of concrete for the axolotl's eyes. Day 82 and day 83. I spent these two days at the mob for mending my tools and elytras. Day 84. I grabbed all the gunpowder from the mob farm, the leftover sand in my storage, made some TNT and blew up the nether. I got enough scraps to make two ingots, so I upgraded my helmet and my boots. Day 85. I had a trip to the end in order to gather materials for my next project, which was going to be another island, this time for the dragon egg. So after getting some end stone, tearing down a part of an end city, and collecting some chorus fruit, I went back and on days 86 to 88, I constructed the third island, which turned out really great in my opinion. Day 89 to 91. I wanted to have a small ship in my area, so I chopped down some spruce and I started building. For this build, I followed the tutorial by Avocado, which is linked down in the description, and it's really amazing. And this ship is going to be the home to our chicken, which doesn't have a name yet. This chicken has been with us since the start of the series, so tell us the name for it and we'll name it in the next 100 days. Day 92. I spent the day gathering as many axolotls as I could, and at the end of the day, I created an axolotl society in my base. Weirdly enough, some of them shrunk in the buckets and were smaller when I released them back into the water, but now I have friends. Day 93. I went to check up on our chicken, but when I got to the boat, there was no chicken, and I couldn't find it anywhere, so this was just a sad day for the axolotls. I did some mining on days 94 and 95 and got more diamonds. I really wanted to have a trident by day 100 so I spent 2 days clean grounds and I only managed to find one which was holding a trident but obviously it didn't drop it. Day 98. I only needed to get 2 more netherite scraps to be able to craft 1 more netherite ingot. So I grabbed my leftover TNT, headed to the nether and did just that. Now I have full netherite armor. Day 99. I took a tour of our area on day 99 because I'm gonna miss this place and we have made some amazing and memorable builds in this world. Starting with the boat which was once home to our chicken who shall remain nameless. Next our nether portal... Uh, Next our nether portal island 
which is the smallest island in the area so far. Then the villager island, which turned out great. And to our last island, which I'm a big fan of, and it's way better now with the chorus trees. Anyway, these cute axolotls are probably my favorite builds of this 100 days. I mean, just look at them. And finally, our base, which is now home to many axolotls just like me. I knew this day would come, but I didn't know it would come this early. So on day 100, I became one with the axolotls, and after doing some brainstorming with the guys, we figured that we are going to continue this series, and we are planning for many amazing stuff in the next 100 days. So, thank you guys so much for watching. Making this video was a lot of fun, and I really enjoyed being an axolotl. If you guys enjoyed this video as well, Make sure to give it a like and subscribe and we will see you in the next video.